Hi there, welcome to the Gourmet Candy Maker video series where we bring the art of gourmet candy making right to you with specialty candy making lessons, great recipes and tips, interviews with professional chocolate artisans, and location visits to candy kitchens throughout the U.S. We're so excited to roll out our show distribution as a podcast as well as launching it on our website which is GourmetCandyMaker.com. In this lesson of the Gourmet Candy Maker, we're going to discuss rolling, dipping, and coating truffle centers. We'll learn why we coat or dip soft centers or ganache. We'll learn the tools you'll need for rolling and coating truffles. Also, how to prepare soft centers for coating, how to roll truffle centers, and how to dip truffle centers. Dipping, coating, and rolling are the three terms that we use to describe how we finish our soft centers or ganache truffles. When we come back, we'll show you how. Hi there, I'm Lynn, your gourmet candy maker, and today we're going to talk about finishing your wonderful soft center ganaches and cream centers. There's three reasons that we need to do this. Number one, it keeps our centers soft and fresh on the inside. Number two, it protects our soft centers from melting out and oozing all over the rest of our assortment. And number three, it gives you the opportunity to create unique designs that distinguish the various flavors in your assortment and give you the artistic license to create a signature brand. There's really no end to the flavor combinations you can create and the variations you can create with even a single flavor ganache. For example, if you take a dark chocolate ganache and coat it in milk chocolate, you'll have a different flavor than if you were to use a dark chocolate coating. And yet again, if you coat it in white chocolate, you'll end up with a light, brighter flavor. All three completely different, even though the center is the same. Now, if we take that same center, we dip it in tempered chocolate and then coat it in various coatings, once again, you have a completely different texture and wonderful, unique taste sensation. So before we get started in actually doing the process, there's a few things that we need to prepare. You'll need a clean work surface. You'll need a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper to receive your finished truffles. You'll need all your ingredients already prepared and measured out tempered chocolate. Remember, this is going to be the finishing touch of your truffles, so your chocolate needs to be in perfect temper so that we get a nice crunch and a real shiny finish. So I have at least one pound of each flavor that I'm going to use. Today we're going to coat in all three flavors, milk chocolate, semi-sweet or dark chocolate, and white chocolate. I'm also going to show how to roll our truffles in cocoa powder, which is the classic style, and I've grated some pecans. We're going to dip our some of our truffles in pecans. I've done a very fine grate of coconut flakes, which should be beautiful and also very tasty. The first technique we're going to use is called dipping. We're going to use a couple of different dipping tools that you can buy at your craft store or at a gourmet food store or online at any one of the candy websites. This is considered a dipping fork. This is a dipping circle that a lot of confectioners use when they're dipping round truffles, which we're going to be doing. And then this is just another variation. You can find these anywhere and very often they'll come in sets. I believe these actually came in a set of two or three. Let's talk a little bit about our truffle centers. I've pre-rolled these centers and they're all very uniform in size. What's important to realize is the shape and the size of the center obviously dictates the finished size and shape of your final chocolate. If you have a really large center, once we coat it in chocolate or enrobe it, or enrobe it in chocolate and then coat it in another coating if we decide to, you may end up with a humongous truffle, maybe just a little bit too big for your assortment. So think about the various processes that you're going to use, the various ways you're going to decorate your truffles and roll your centers accordingly. Down here on this end, you'll see these little guys are actually very small. I've reserved these for 
the uh, coating or rolling in the nuts and in the um, shaved coconut because they will almost double in size when we're finished. A good size for a truffle center is about one half to three quarter inch in diameter and they weigh anywhere between three half to three quarters of an ounce. That will give you a finished product that is an inch in diameter or better and about an ounce of confection when you're completely done. These smaller ones are just a little bigger than the size of a dime and they probably don't even weigh a half ounce but you'll see that when we coat them in the nuts or in the shaved coconut they're going to expand and be perfectly sized for our assortments. So let's do a little dipping with our dipping forks. The first flavor that we're going to use is our milk chocolate and I usually use my hands when I coat my truffles. I don't use the utensils so this is going to be interesting. I might be just a little bit clumsy but we'll give it a try. So I take my firm center, put it on the tool and you just very simply dip it in your tempered chocolate. The trick is to get the chocolate completely surrounded, um, surrounding the truffle. The beauty of doing it this way is you end up with a super, super smooth finish. I'll just scrape it on the edge of the bowl and then I will hope that it pops off. There's one example. So we'll do it one more time. So I take this, I do a nice little tap. Again, I wick off the excess and I'm just going to ease that off with this utensil. See how clumsy I am? There we go. This is not as easy as it looks. Okay, one more time. This time I'm just going to pop it out upside down and then just make sure that it's coated. So let's continue a little more. Give it a nice scoop. Bloop, fell in again. And once again, this is giving us a very nice, super finished finish. It's very formal, very clean, and beautiful. So let's shift to the dark chocolate, and we'll use a, a dipping fork. It's exactly the same technique. Now sometimes, depending on the brand of chocolate that you use. Sometimes dipping this way is difficult because the viscosity or thickness of your tempered chocolate is just a little too dense. And you end up with too much chocolate on your truffles. This dark chocolate is a Calibo flavor and it's pretty thick, but we're doing fine this way. I just wick it along the edge and let my little truffle roll off. Now what you need to be careful here is that we don't leave any openings uh, for the ganache to, as it starts to loosen up or thaw, ooze through. So I want to make sure that I have my truffles completely coated. So I'm going to do one more. Again, we're using a dipping fork. Make sure we have it completely coated. Scoot it along and then a 
lay it out just like that. That's probably our best one so far. Okay, so now on to the, the coating style where you actually get your fingers in the chocolate and you use your hands. This is the style or the, the method that I've used for 20 years. I've um, gotten pretty good at it, pretty easy. I have total control over how much chocolate that I have on my truffles. I can see where there might be a little gap or a little hole and I can take care of it right away. So I'll take my dark chocolate, we'll start with the dark chocolate and I'll get my fingers with just a little bit of chocolate on them. I'll find my truffle and then I just use my fingertips to coat it. I lay it out and I do my little squiggle and then I move on to the next one. This will give you a lot of hand control. You can feel how much chocolate is on your truffle center. See, it gets a little messy. And you can actually, after a while, you can get comfortable enough to where you can um, create a little signature swoop on top. When you're rolling or coating your truffles, you want the outer shell to be nice and thin and again perfectly in temper. It can't be too thin or it will crack under the pressure of the soft ganache, but you don't want it so thick as to distract from the wonderful soft center you have inside. So you'll have to just experiment and find the right thickness that suits your recipe and your personal taste. So now I'm going to wash my hands and we'll move on to white chocolate. Coating truffles in white chocolate has a couple of nuances all its own. So when we come back, we'll go right into that. Now we're going to talk about coating your truffles in white chocolate. Usually white chocolate is substantially thinner than your milk chocolate and your dark chocolate, so very often your coating will be thin as well. Very often you will have to go back and do a second coating to make sure again that as your ganache um, warms up or heats up to room temperature, it doesn't crack the shell and ooze out. Once you've done the first coat, you can pretty much tell if you need to go back and do a second coat. If I can see my dark chocolate center, I know that it's not quite thick enough. So there we go. I'm just going to clip through here fairly quickly. I'm a little more generous with the white chocolate in my coating. As you can see, I have much more between my fingers. And as I set it down, I give it a little extra dollop on top. Coating your truffles once is wonderful. That will make for a very light, thin out, outer shell, but most often, the truffle, again, as it warms up, will break through. Okay, so that is hand coating truffles 101. Pretty simple. A lot of fun to do, gives you lots of control over how much chocolate you put on, and then allows you to do a little signature squiggle on top. I'm going to wash my hands again, and we will go into the rolling your truffles in the various ingredients. Another great treatment to finishing your truffles is to roll them in another ingredient. We still use tempered chocolate to protect our soft cream center, but after we dip it in the tempered chocolate, we will 
roll them in these various ingredients. A classic truffle, the way the truffle craze all started, was soft ganache center, dipped in chocolate, and then rolled in cocoa powder. The look is one of the natural uh, mushroom for which the truffle is named. And you have sort of an organic look to them. So I'm going to take this truffle, dip it in chocolate, and just plop it right in there. And I'm actually going to do a couple. We're dipping our chocolates, our truffle center, sorry, in dark chocolate. And then we coat them with cocoa powder. And I just take my little fork and I roll them around. Roll them around, roll them around. And then I can take them out and continue to give them a nice little dusting until the chocolate starts to firm up. And then set them out on my cookie sheet. And what you have is the classic dark chocolate truffle. Pretty beautiful. Now let's dip our truffles in our ground or grated nuts. I've actually used my food processor to make the nuts super fine. These are actually pecans. And I'll take my little truffle. Remember it will increase in size. I'm going to dip it in my chocolate. Wick it just a little bit. I'm going to do one more, dip it in my chocolate, make sure it's all coated. Put it here, and then I will take another utensil and just move the truffles around until they're nicely coated. Once they're all coated, just pick them up and lay them out like this. Now you'll see this size, the center is really small compared to these, but when we're all said and done, this is the finished size of our other truffles. So it's, it's a great size uh, for uniform assortments. We'll dip this in our white chocolate, as you can see, our white chocolate is starting to set because it's in such perfect temper. I'll drop that in there. And then I'm just gonna take my fingers and wiggle that around. Does that just look delicious or what? Now what I'm discovering, what you can see too, is that the white chocolate is not coating the ganache completely. So this might be a little problem. We'll do it again. Take a little bigger one this time. Dip this in white chocolate. Pop it in there. And just coat that with our coconut. Oh, it looks so good. Once again, just roll it around. This is going to be a big one. And set it on your cookie sheet. Now if you find after your truffle set that this technique using only one coat of white chocolate and then the coconut um, allows the ganache to, when it starts to uh, soften or get to room temperature, scoot through, you'll know that you have to double coat with white chocolate your soft centers or ganache and then coat them in the coconut. Let's talk very briefly about your soft centers. Most truffle recipes yield a consistency that works very well at room temperature. It's firm enough that you can make your soft 
your truffle balls. They'll keep their shape and they won't start to melt too much um, when you're using them. But you might find that some centers or your variation to the recipe causes the soft center to become very liquidy and get very soft as it starts to melt. If that's the case, you may choose to form your uh, round truffle balls and then put them in the refrigerator for a bit. That's perfectly fine, but be very sensitive to the condensation. If you leave your chocolate centers in the refrigerator to where they get very cold through and through, as they start to warm up while they're waiting for their chocolate bath, they may cause, or there, there may be a little bit of liquid or condensation on them. That can cause a problem with your tempered chocolate. So just be aware of how cold your centers are and if condensation begins to form before you actually coat them. So to recap, the three ways that you finish your truffles are, you can roll them in various ingredients after you've coated them in chocolate. You can coat them using the finger method and you can also dip them using a dipping fork or a dipping round. Quite simple, can't wait to put these in my assortment. Until next time, I'm Lynn, your gourmet candy maker. Have a great time. Be sure to subscribe to our RSS feed and stay tuned for the next Gourmet Candy Maker Show. Bye for now.